Okay, I'm going to solve a problem that's uh, basically it's a, how to how to look graph a feasible region for a region that may be unbounded. And also, this is a little bit tricky because it has some negative coordinates, and it's kind of tricky to graph on Excel because of the negative coordinates and the x and the y. And um, so, this is going to for those of you who are taking my quantitative methods class uh, uh, in the fall of 2019. This is like problem 2-45. It's not the exact problem, but it's very like problem 2-45. So, so I restated the problem right here. We have the we have the uh, objective function 2a minus 2b. We want to maximize it. a and b are greater than or equal to zero, so that means we want to stay in the upper right quadrant when we're graphing. And we have two constraints: a negative 6a plus 2b is less than or equal to three, and 1.5a minus 2b is less than or equal to 4. So the way I usually tell you is to try to graph it first by using the intercepts. So we'll go ahead and do the intercepts. We'll say if A is 0, what does B have to be? Well, B has to be equal to 3 divided by 2. Okay. So this is actually, we're going to do the first constraint here. And then if B is 0, well, A has to be equal to 3 divided by a minus 6. Okay, and then we can do the second constraint. I'm going to go equals second constraint. And we can do the same thing. If A is 0, we solve for B. Well, B equals 4 divided by a minus 2. And if B is 0, then A equals 4 divided by 1.5. So that's 2.6667. Okay, so uh, so then when I tell you, I tell you to graph it. So let's go ahead and graph this and just see what it looks like. Now this is going to look funny because you can see some of our coordinates are not in not in the positive uh, positive quadrant of our graphing region. But I'll show you how to fix that in a second. Don't get too too excited. So uh, so what we're going to do? We're going to highlight this this first constraint. Remember we have the x and the y intercepts here. So I'm just going to go insert, and the easiest way to graph it is going to go to scatter plot and do the scatter plot with the straight lines. And then we just double check it. We have 0, 1.5. Okay, so that doesn't look right because I have 1.5, 0. So I want to go to switch row and column. So now I have 0, 1.5, and I also have a minus 0 0.5, 0. So those points are right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and delete where it says chart. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in uh, the axis titles while I'm right here. I'm going to go add chart element, axis titles, primary horizontal. And I'm going to go to here, and I go equals A. So A is going to be my axis. axis. Excuse me. And then I'm going to add the vertical title. And again, I'll go equals B. So now I have that added to my graph so I know that A and B, instead of X and Y, but you can see here I'm in the wrong quadrant, but we'll fix that in a second. And then uh, one another thing I can do while I'm here, I can go to Select Data, and I can edit, and we'll call this the first constraint. Okay. And now we want to add another. Now we're going to add the second constraint in. So I'm going to go Add. Series name is second constraint. The x values are these two. And I have to delete this, those don't highlight over. Delete it first, and then Y values are these. And I'm going to go OK and OK. And I guess I could add a legend too. So I'm going to add our chart, add chart element, and we'll go add legend. Let's go ahead and put it at the top. Okay. So now we have our graph. Now the problem is this line needs to be extended up into here into the first quadrant, and this line has to be extended from here into the first quadrant. So from 2.66 over, that's where that line is in that first quadrant. So you can see that this charted the x and y intercepts for us fine, but we just have to tell Excel, no, 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 I don't want to graph it in those quadrants. I want to graph it in the first quadrant. Okay. So probably the easiest way to do that is write this, rewrite these, these, these four. So I want to solve, I want to solve for B in terms of A. Okay. So if we solve this, we could, this would look like, 2b, remember this is a minus 6a plus 2b, and we put an equal sign here instead of a less than equal, equals 3. 
So if I want to solve this in terms of B, I would I would take this and put it to the other side of the equation, right? So I would say this equals equals um, I'm going to go parentheses and I'm going to say this and in order to get it to the other side I have to subtract it on both sides so I'm going to say minus this okay and then I have to divide both terms by this 2 and you can see okay let me make sure that's right hold on so it's going to be this minus this makes it a plus right divided by this let's just make sure it's okay I'll copy it down okay so some I did something wrong hold on let me sec I'm solving for B three take that to that side Hold on. Okay, I had to pause the video because I didn't see where my mistake was. I forgot the A here, so I guess hey, this is uh, times this, right? And then if I hit enter, and if I copy this down, these should stay the same. Okay. Only thing is here, I want to make sure, I want to make sure these, I'm going to hit F4 when I'm here. To put dollar signs. I'm going to put... Uh, F4 here. When I put dial sign, I put F4 here. Okay, so now if I copy this down, we should still have the intercepts, right? And then I'm copy it down again to here. And I want to make sure these are right here. Now we're talking about the second constraint. And it's still going to look the same, but I'm just putting an equation in there instead. Okay. Let me put the formula equals formula text. And so basically I said three and I want I want to move this minus six a to that side, so it's gonna be I have to subtract it on and this is minus six times a, which is right here. Okay, and then divided by this two, and I have to divide both terms by the two. So if you do the algebra, it will make sense to you, okay? I'm kind of doing the algebra in my head here, and it doesn't make as much sense. I wish I had a piece of paper and a pencil to make a little more sense to you. But you can see I still have the same equation, but I just wrote I wrote B in terms of A. So I just solved this equation in terms of B equals what, okay? And so now what we can do, we can, we can say, well, I want this first constraint. I want it to start at zero, okay? So, and then I want it to end maybe, let's say, let's say we want to end it maybe somewhere past where this line starts. So maybe we want to end it at, uh, I don't know, five. You can see now I put, now I moved this line starting at zero on the left to five on the right. So I moved it to, uh, to the first quadrant. Now this one I wanted to start at, uh, I wanted to start it right here, right? So I can leave this one. So what should I? So where do I want this to end? Well, maybe I should end this at maybe ten, at ten. And now you can see I have, I have uh, my two lines. Of now I put them into the first quadrant. Okay. So if you look at the feasible region, um, this has to be less than or equal to two. So if I if I put the zero if I substitute zero in here zero times this and zero times this that's less than or equal to three so I would shade this one down and if this line goes out to infinity right I can keep going to with this line if I want to so I could put this one to 10 also if I wanted to and it just keeps going right okay so it just keeps going and going and this line also keeps going. I just happen to use 10 as my ending points, right? And uh, so my feasible region for this line, if I plug in 0, 0 also, it would shade up. So it shaded, So my feasible region would be here going forever and here going forever. So I go ahead and shade it. I'll go insert uh, shapes. Let's do like uh, how many? I've got 1, 2, 
we want for like four sides so I'll put the maybe a parallelogram and I want to put it like well, it's more than four sides right maybe I want to insert a different shape I want to insert uh, something with five sides so let's say I want to put it like starting here and then what I can do I can go here to edit shape and endpoints I can move this thing to uh, to bond my region. You can see this doesn't stop at that point. It goes on forever, right? This one goes to here. And this one also goes on forever, doesn't it? Well, really what I could do, I could take this one and go forever. So my feasible region. Oh. Anyway, you get the idea. That goes on forever. So my feasible region, so the question, so I graphed it. That's part A is my graph. That's my answer for my graph. And uh, part B, is it unbounded? Yes, it's unbounded because it goes on forever out here. So then we want to find the optimal solution. Well, we would point it, we'd plug in these three points and see which one is the optimal solution. You can do it the way I showed you in class. I could take these three. I could go down here, go to copy. And I could put them here. And then I could say A and B. And I could guess it, maybe 0 and 0. So we're guessing. And then here, I could go equals M multiply. And I'm going to highlight these right here times the transpose of these two. And then if I hit Control, Shift, Enter, so now if I guess different things, like if I cast uh, 0 and 1.5, it'll give me an answer here, right? So what I'll do is I'll make Excel guess this to maximize this. So what I'll do is I'll copy these down here. And I'm going to go to Solver. So I'll go to Data. Oh, where's Data? Data. Solver. And I want to set this is my objective. I want to maximize it by changing these two cells. And we'll add some constraints. We'll say this is less than or equal to this. And I add another constraint. I'll say this is less than or equal to this. And I go OK. And we'll make this simplex. And then we go solve. And I go OK. So now it says here, objective cell values do not conser or converge, um, but it converged on what it could, right? And it said 2.6670, which is that point right there, is the solution, okay? Um, and it maximizes at this. Now, uh, so that's the solution. And... Uh, so, because that's the only those are the only three points we can use, right? Uh, so question D does a does an unbounded let me move this out of the way. Does an unbounded feasible region imply that the optimal solution a linear program will want be unbounded? Well, not necessarily, because if I was minimizing this, it wouldn't be unbounded, right? Because it would because it, it would minimize onto these three points. If I'm maximizing, it kind of depends on the objective function. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, this feasible region is unbounded, but the solution is not always unbounded. Uh, if I was minimizing this, it would not be unbounded. If I'm maximizing it, it is unbounded, but you could still use these three points to try to find the solution. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, I know I went kind of quick. I'm sorry for those of you who've never seen a video of mine. Uh, some of some of the stuff I did not explain because I have it in other videos. This is a little bit more of an advanced problem. But if you pause it and look, you still might be able to figure out what I did. Uh, when I did this right here, I did something called matrix multiplication. Okay. In order to answer that, you have to in order to put in a matrix formula, you have to put in you have to hit Control Shift Enter afterwards. So anyway, hopefully this video makes sense. Uh, if you like this video, you could probably hit like for me. I'm going to have my picture here, so if you want to subscribe to my videos, please hit subscribe. 
And that's it for this one. Hopefully it helped.